Hey there, PlatformCon. Welcome to this session called S3D Map. In this session, I'm going to introduce both a methodology and a new open source tool that will help you reduce costs of your S3 bucket storage. The methodology is based on extensive research performed at our uh, 5X, wonderful 5X research team, and is based on actual real-life uh, customer use cases. First, a couple of words about uh, Point5 and myself. Point5 is a platform and a deep, actionable, and collaborative platform that allows cloud cost efficiency for large uh, companies and enterprises. And hi, I'm Dora Zuri. I'm a data, cloud, and security enthusiast uh, with over a decade of experience in the InfoSec industry, both as a security researcher and as a frequent speaker at uh, security conferences. Let me jump straight into the end of the uh, session just for a glimpse of the uh, final tool that we are going to present uh, that gives you a 3D uh, multi-dimension uh, view of the storage in your bucket. Uh, we will see how it helps with reducing costs. So let's start with an organized uh, way. Uh, so the agenda for us is firstly talk about the scope. As platform engineers, you probably have a lot on your head and uh, uh, probably most of the things that you care about fall into three categories, performance, security, and cost. And if we drill down into cost, the two main and big spenders in the cloud are compute and storage. Storage is the second. So the context before the scope that, that we talked about before is what you see in purple. In green is what we're going to talk about in this uh, session. We will understand the focus. Why are we focusing on S3 buckets? We will understand the challenge when trying to optimize cost. Uh, we will set the, uh, how a solution should look like uh, for finding the efficient bucket uh, architecture. And we will talk the different uh, methodologies or approaches uh, that we see and the one that we are going to introduce using uh, accompanied by the tool that we are going to present. So our focus inside the storage world is S3 buckets. S3 is an object storage service that offers high-grade scalability, data availability, security, performance, and durability. It is really used for everything. You can store static files, you can store large files, uh, log files, uh, binary files, and really, really everything. Uh, but it, it is even enough to look at the usage, the internal usage that AWS services uh, are using S3 for uh, to understand how centric it is. Uh, so AWS offers many types of storage uh, types, S3, FSx, CloudWatch, EBS, DynamoDB, and EFS, and probably others, and probably some of them use internally <laughs> each other. Uh, but other services as well, like Athena, Lambda, EMR, Elasticash, and our beloved, uh, beloved uh, EC2 and RDS use S3 as well as internal storage mechanisms for snapshots, for backups, for actual content when talking about Athena, for code when we talk about Lambda, and pretty much everything. It is a very fundamental uh, building block of AWS Cloud. But with all that goodness comes also the challenge. Uh, we call it the big data and small letters challenge. Uh, with uh, putting a lot of data into your buckets, you need to read into small letters. And why is that? Because a lot of uh, this, the cost that you're going to, to uh, see on S3 is uh, the storage cost and the storage uh, tells the story of the different uh, storage classes. Uh, as you move from left to right, from the uh, hottest uh, storage class to the coldest one uh, in Glacier Deep Archive, uh, you see costs uh, of storage are going down, but many other new cost uh, categories and other caveats are uh, appearing. For example, if you move from standard to standard infrequent access, uh, you start to pay two, uh, almost two times on GET requests. If you move from Glacier Instant Retrieval to Glacier Flexible Retrieval, you get two main things. First, uh, your requests uh, for data retrieval are no more synchronous. You need to uh, retrieve and wait uh, up to, two, to five hours in order to get the data from the bucket. And second of all, you start to pay metadata uh, storage, uh, eight kilobyte at the standard rate and 32 kilobyte at the Glacier instant retrieval rate. And this is really just uh, a summary. 
<laughs> there are a lot of uh, uh, small letters that you need to read, to, and this is part of the challenge. But it is actually only a part of the challenge because storage is not the only kind of cost uh, at S3 buckets. You pay for API requests, for data transfer, transitions, data retrieval, and many kinds of overhead, uh, some of them we saw before. And that's without even mentioning other features that may drive further costs, like uh, uh, monitoring of uh, intelligent tiering, encryption, access point, S3 inventory, access log, acceleration, replication, and whatnot. And this whole scheme of uh, different uh, cost factors are multidimensional and dependent of each other, which make it very hard to decide which storage class to put, to put what. So our goal here is to go in, inside that maze and uh, mind game with AWS and find the efficient bucket architecture. Uh, now, it is kind of an overlooked prof profession in uh, platform engineering, the bucket architecture, where you want to design the right buckets to the right workloads in order to enable cost optimization, efficiency, and even ease of use. So it is important to remember that buckets themselves, creation of buckets, are free of charge. You only pay for the storage inside of them. And our main focus uh, when we talk about uh, the different uh, bucket models and uh, designing the, the right uh, bucket uh, uh, involve around the scale of uh, from the generalized bucket to the designated bucket. Uh, and the question that uh, puts any, uh, any bucket uh, inside that scale is what are the common attributes of the objects inside of it? We will talk about it uh, in details uh, very soon. And not to, uh, to forget that there are other additional concerns when uh, designing the bucket, uh, which is authorization, who can access which bucket, data compliance, which tenants or which customers have their data on which buckets, uh, application architecture, and more and more that make it even harder. So the common practice, and we say it's bad, it's bad from a cost perspective, is the generalized bucket. What is the generalized bucket? In short, it's a bucket with no definitive purpose. It reflects some kind of an organizational structure by the department, team, or product, or a mix of those. It uh, includes a mix of content types and sizes. It has both hot and cold data that you use frequently and infrequently. Uh, many different workloads interact with it and write to it. Uh, and sometimes it is even used as if it was a Google Drive storage. Example, examples for these kind of patterns that we see in buckets, company level buckets for logs, uh, region, uh, regional uh, bucket where you put everything from that region inside one bucket, a department bucket uh, may, may sound uh, convenient, but uh, actually holds very different kinds of uh, data types. The ideal bucket, on the other hand, is a designated bucket. A designated bucket serves a well-defined purpose. It's the utopia of uh, bucket uh, architecture uh, because it contains homogeneous content type, homogeneous object sizes. Uh, the prefixes are used as indexing, uh, let's say for temporal indexing or uh, uh, tenant indexing instead of uh, representing hierarchical, hierarchical uh, folders. Uh, the bucket should be located in the right region, given the workloads and the clients that interact with it. It has the minimal number of uh, workloads that interact with it, uh, and it enables far more uh, convenient uh, way of organizing and optimizing a bucket. Uh, apart from that, you get also bonuses, uh, extra benefits. It allows the best cost allocation because cost and usage report uh, report at usage and cost at the bucket level. And some S3 features, even though not, of the, not all of them are, in, are needed for our uh, uh, methodology, are uh, bucket level. Internal artifacts inside AWS as well uh, direct you or uh, provide you with the option to create a new bucket or define a destination prefix when you create an artifact from other services. Uh, that's a hint that uh, it is really useful. Another uh, hint from the past, uh, the Linux file system structure that is organized in a way that each path or each directory, uh, you can expect a different kind of uh, usage and files to, to be uh, in. For example, the sbin directory that holds the system binaries, you will find 
probably find not so big uh, binaries that uh, hold the, the executables that you run for your commands. Now, let us introduce the methodology, the Prefix Oriented Objects Management, or in short, PUM. First, let's, let's set uh, the term straight. The prefix is a string of characters at the beginning of the object key name. You can think of prefixes as a way to organize your data uh, in a similar way to directories. However, prefixes are not directories. You can see the different prefixes of a specific uh, object key. And it is important to note that under the hood, prefixes are implicit instructions for S3 to partition the physical data storage. Uh, and that's a really great relevation. That means that a quota for APIs are per prefix. So if you want to uh, horizontally scale API requests in, in a bucket, prefixes are also a way to, to gain that. Uh, and most, more importantly, uh, most of the uh, mechanisms that are used to manage a, a uh, storage classes and the cost, uh, like lifecycle policies, expiration policies, intelligent tiering, and, and S3 inventory, uh, all work by the prefix. So you actually don't have to have a designated or a sp uh, specialized bucket. You can uh, break it down by the prefix. Now, after we understood the complexities and cost drivers of uh, S3, you may ask yourself, how am I going to implement it on my own architecture, on my own infrastructure? And of course, it is not very viable uh, at, at many cases to migrate data and objects from one bucket to the other to design it in the perfect way. Uh, and for that comes the remedy of the prefixes. And in order to understand how your prefixes are uh, currently uh, 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 organized in your existing buckets, we have created this tool. It's an open source tool that allows you to visualize uh, to, uh, to visualize your uh, uh, storage in a bucket in a 3D and interactive way. Now, the use cases of this tool are many, and the questions it may answer are many, but let us go through a couple of them and then uh, have a short uh, live uh, demo of the tool. So one basic question, uh, is which prefixes hold the most storage. You can see it visually as the tree map uh, boxes size. What is the average object size in a prefix? You want to see uh, maybe a, a potential move to uh, intelligent tiering, which uh, is affected a lot by the object size. Uh, what file types are there in each prefix? How many objects are in, in each prefix? The storage classes that are uh, uh, located inside the prefix. How many days since an object in a prefix were, uh, were, uh, was updated? Is the uh, prefix file type homogeneous? You can see the actual uh, file types and suffixes inside the pre prefix. How many uh, non-current versions, if you use versioning on a bucket, how many non-current versions are in a prefix? Uh, and also, not only by the, the number of versions, is how much overhead cost you pay uh, for versions that are the, the, not the latest versions inside a specific uh, prefix. These kind of questions will help you not only answer which storage classes should be used in each prefix, but also other uh, more general uh, views uh, of, the, of the bucket and can drive even non-cost related uh, uh, insights. So this is uh, demo time. It is pretty straightforward. You can choose the bucket that is preloaded, in this case, the sample bucket. And we can hit update trim up to see the initial trim up with the default configuration. Now, as you can see, it is pretty overwhelming at first. But uh, of course, you can go down into, let's say, the first uh, top level uh, prefix and start from there. What we are seeing here is the different top level prefixes the sizes are determined by the total size inside the prefix that is stored, and the color is determined by the average size of objects inside of it. We can go deeper uh, through the, the depth of the prefixes, uh, one step by, uh, at a time, and uh, actually visualize places where the average size, for example, is bigger than others or smaller than, than the other bucket. We can uh, drill down. Uh, interactively into that specific prefix and and that sub prefix and go back uh, to the root level. 
uh, then we can choose a different color dimension from any of the listed here. For example, we can we want to see the different uh, suffixes or the count of suffixes inside uh, each prefix to understand how file type homogeneous is each uh, prefix. And as you can see, the darker the color, the more distinct suffixes that there are. In this case, four. In many other cases, there are only three. And you can see very small uh, uh, storage locations uh, where, the, where there are not many distinct suffixes. And if we are interested, interested to see the actual suffixes inside, we can choose suffixes and look at the different uh, file types. For example, here we can see that there's only one file type, which is JKS. Then, thank you very much for listening. I hope you benefited and enjoyed this uh, session. If you did, make sure you try that uh, open source tool and hit me up for questions and also try to contribute on GitHub. Thank you.